I've actually had a few questions recently about the Fed Funds Futures estimates, including the chart that we display on our site. You can get to this chart, by the way, by uh, clicking on the, uh, uh, the individual pairs analysis icons. As you scroll down the page, there's a link uh, with a little chart snapshot of the Fed Funds Futures chart. So it's June 25th. The FOMC is due to come out with an interest rate policy announcement. And recently, there's been a real shift in the probability for a rate cut. And a lot of folks are familiar with looking at the analysis that we provide here on the Fed Funds Futures contract, which is a futures contract that traders can use to invest against or for the probability of an interest rate cut, hike, stability, et cetera. But how does this really work, and is there a way to get a little bit more information? Well, there definitely is. So let's talk about this first, this chart that we display on our site. What is it and how is it calculated? Then we'll go, I'll show you where to get even more information, uh, detailed information about what's going on today, uh, uh, by next week, what can you find out about next week, and, and so on. The Fed Funds Futures contract is bought and sold just like any uh, financial contract. If you think that the market for that contract is going to go up, then you'd be buying that futures contract. And if you think the market for that contract is going to go down, you'd be selling it. So pretty straightforward, not dissimilar to how things work in the spot Forex or Forex currency futures or any of those sorts of things. But what does it really mean? Because over here on the right-hand side on the index, we've got numbers like 97.49 and uh, 98, but th that, that has nothing to do with the Fed Funds futures or the Fed Funds rate, or, or does it? In fact, it definitely does. So the way that this is calculated is that it has a base of 100. Then you subtract the trader's estimates for what the Fed Funds or the Fed Funds rate is likely to be. So if the Fed Funds rate is, is forecasted to be 2%, then you would see a reading of 98, such as we were seeing here in May and June. Uh, if the Fed Funds uh, are, are estimated to rise, so if that, that Fed rate is likely to go up, then you're gonna see this index fall. So for example, we fall all the way down here to uh, uh, 97.25, right where this line is, and as you can see, that basically means that traders think that the market is going to, that the Fed, Fed is going to increase interest rates by three quarters of a, of a percentage point. So, uh, because if you, if you subtract 97.25 from 100, you get 2.75. And right now with rates at 2%, uh, that, in, that indicates that traders think that the market, that, that the Fed funds rate is going to go up. So that's how the index works. And conversely, you'll notice recently investors really shifted their mind. They felt like uh, the, the interest rates were definitely going to go up in the near term. But now they've started to bid the market back up a little bit, which means that the estimate for where traders think that the Fed funds, futures, the Fed funds rate is going to go in the future is uh, much lower than it was even just a week or so ago. So <clears throat> this, this chart, however... This is not what, what traders think is going to happen today as the FOMC releases their information. This is what investors think that the Fed is going to do in the near term. It's a composite chart. So it combines estimates about contracts that expire this month, that expire next month, and on down the list. So this is, this is a chart that you would look at to try to understand what do traders think that the Fed is going to do in the near term over the next few months. Well, over the next few months, what traders really think right now is that the Fed is ultimately going to raise rates by half a point. So now that may not happen with today's announcement, but over the near term. The takeaway here is not even necessarily that, that traders think that the Fed is going to raise rates by half a point. It's that traders think that the Fed is done lowering rates and they're done leaving them unchanged, but that in the near term, they're going to be raising rates. That's the real takeaway. And that's the, that's the trend or that's the fundamental factor that is going to affect the trend over the intermediate term. So I would say between the, in the three to nine month range, so one to three quarters uh, looking ahead, that is the information that we need to know. Now, what if you want a little bit extra information? 
that's all available. And as I often say, the market is unbelievably transparent. Information is available to anyone. Uh, retail traders just oftentimes don't know where it is. Well, the Fed Fund's futures contract is traded at the Chicago Board of Trade. I'm here at their website right now. It's www.cbot.com. And uh, we, you can click on products, interest rate, and that'll take you to the page that we're looking at right now. Over here on the right-hand side, there's a list of their interest rate futures products. Down at the very bottom is the 30-day Fed funds rate. Let's click on that. That immediately brings up some information for each of the Fed Funds Futures contracts. These are uh, different expiries, so you can see them listed here under the expiry column. Uh, June, July, August, September, October, on down the list. As you can see, the numbers here are dropping from 97.99 for June's contract, so that's really relevant to today. Well, if we subtract that from 100, we get basically 2%. So traders right now are thinking that in June, the Fed funds rate is going to stay at 2%. Kind of interesting information, right? Now, as we go forward in time, however, we can kind of see this one to three quarters in, the, in advance. The traders are starting to estimate that by October, we've got a cut. So September, October, we've got a quarter point cut at least. If we kind of average those two together, we're going to come up with a 2.25% when we take it away from 100. As we get down into November, we're starting to get into end December of 2008, we've got a half a point increase. So we're th we're, traders are beginning to think that by November and December, we've got a Fed funds rate of 2.5%. So that's telling us what traders think about the trend. Now we're all, uh, th this is interesting information. It's a nice little snapshot, but, uh, but we're all chartists here. So how do we get a chart of this information? Just to uh, n not only get a view as to what's going on today, but when something really changes, a dramatic shift in the market, which as Forex traders, we should definitely be interested in that. How can we get a little bit more information along those lines? Well, you'll notice under the expiry column, there's a little chart symbol for each of these. I'm just gonna click on the first one here in June. That's brought up a daily chart, and as you can see, we've been hovering here at about 2% in June. So traders have been estimating that, the, that there was a very high probability for the, for the Fed funds rate to stay at 2% in June for a while. Uh, as we scroll down here a little bit, I can change this information. So I can even change the charting period or whatever it is. All this is free and available to anyone, by the way. Uh, but we can scoot out into the future a little bit. So let's take a look at that November contract where we were seeing uh, uh, a real shift in investor sentiment where uh, the uh, traders are beginning to expect a, uh, a move in uh, towards the end of the year to 2.25%. Well, we can see it here, quoted 97.5%. What that's telling us is that if we subtract that from 100, we get 2.5%. So traders right now are really expecting that. But you can also see more clearly, the further you go out, the more volatile the contract is going to be because there are more unknowns. The further we go out in that, into that three-quarter range, uh, going out three quarters in time, uh, there's a lot more unknowns. There's a lot more things that could happen in the intervening time. So we get more volatility and we get a little bit more insight into what traders think about uh, the probability of a rate hike, rate cuts, etc. So they were expecting a deeper cut, almost three quarters, or a deeper hike, almost three quarters of a point to 2.75% very recently here in mid-June. And now they've kind of scaled back on that estimate. As you can see here, we've gone from uh, 97.25 to 97.5. By the way, you can see that the market paused down there and then just shot up on this candle right here or this bar right here. Well, that was that was the 17th of June. Here's a couple of reasons why that's relevant to know that the market was really shifting its sentiment. If we take a look at the Euro US dollar, for example, and we recall, so we were stuck in this consolidation pattern. Is support gonna hold in the middle of June? Is it not? Uh, well, boom, that candle right there, in fact, let's zoom in on that just a little bit. If we look a little bit closer at the chart here, you can see, uh, we'll just circle that day, so 617 there, we get a confirmation that this support level really is likely to hold as uh, that interest rate expectation declines significantly uh, on that, as the market bounced up off of that estimate of a 75, uh, or 0.75 of a rate cut or of a rate hike by the end of the year to 0.5, uh, which is obviously a big difference. So a, qu a whole quarter point in 
uh, a decline in the estimate there by the end of the year. That's good. That that trend, that forecast, makes a difference for traders' uh, expectations about the euro U.S. dollar and the U.S. dollar in general. So we see that uh, confirm that support, that bounce off of support, the market uh, heading back up towards uh, resistance level, which could have been a short-term target certainly, but adds a little bit to the weight that we're putting on expectations that if the market breaks out up above this uh, resistance level here, we have quite a bit of upside on the euro-US dollar against a weak dollar.